姐们的谢幕，必须盛大而壮丽。Hey guys. Alright. How's everybody today? Glad to hear, glad to hear. Wanted to change it up today with a YouTube stream. I haven't done one of these in a minute. I don't expect this to do numbers by any means. I'm doing good. Upon hearing of human dreams, okay. she says gold, an insatiable e evil track in descent. Paimon coming in! Paimon coming in! Is this level okay? Can you hear Paimon? Ended upon the kingdom. There we go. 
Oblivious to this ill, the king and his princess continue to debate the content of their meal. Meat or vegetable. How long? We have a little over nine days. The squabble. A little over nine days. So the archipelago is gone. And then the evil dragon appeared. I gotta show you. Oh shoot, not even nine anymore, eight. <laughs> Come on, see your life. I'm listening. Dreams like gold. Uneven time. <laughs> time to get to work. Hey, my sales. Let hear it. Ah, good. Very good. Though you are puny, you harbor dreams grand enough for myself. Yeah. All right. Be gone, evil dragon. Evil dragon? How laughable. A dragon as illustrated and thoughtful as myself should surely be granted enlightened as a title. My kin are known to covet treasure, yet I have found the dreams of puny man more enticing than jewels. It is most spectacular how man can stuff their minds with dreams, whether they be starving or full. Human dreams are more precious than gold or... Don't get me wrong, I like the official island, Today I but I wish there was a way to speed this up. If your dreams are indeed as filling as they are valuable. <laughs> my hunger wears away at my control. I must feast as I have no idea. Puny king, if you value your own life and those of your kin, then offer up thy sacrifice thereupon. Come on, next one. Uh, I was about to say, hurry. <laughs> are your vile eyes mere reflective stones? Dreams and nobility are my lifelong pursuits. I will. Okay. While this is going, let me lower this some more. Will not give them up. We can talk about Sumeru. Because that's what I really came for. I don't, I don't care about this. Be gone, evil dragon. The kingdom won't cower before you. Alright, so. Let's start it up. Honest thoughts. Come on. I know you guys got some. Honest thoughts. I, must urge that you I know some of you saw the 3.0 trailer. I know some of you might not even care for how it was presented. But what's the honest thoughts on Sumer so far? Before it actually drops. It could be dead reactions, characters, I don't care. Find some rest in your Let me hear it. Outskirts, but before nightfall, I will return from my fill. If you fail to give, then I will take for myself. Your palace shall be my hunting grounds, and your halls my stone. <laughs> you don't come home. Are you part of the uh, Kusalali gang with Jima? <laughs> So you actually like the Dentro Archon design, right, Grim? Because quite a few people don't. Firstly, I like the Dentro Archon's design. She's cute. She's adorable. I, I don't know why people are freaking out about the fact that she's a child. Talking about Sumeru, everybody's thoughts, opinions. Feel free to share. I will defeat the dragon to protect our kingdom. They didn't talk about res the elemental resonance during the 3.0 live stream, which is surprising. I thought that they were going to announce it there, the change of the resonance, but we spent a lot more time on other things. So I, I was kind of surprised that they didn't talk about the elemental resonance changes, which is weird. My question is, does that mean that the elemental resonance 
as a warrior. Why why wouldn't they share that though? That's Dragon weird. Outside, I cannot just sit still. Uh oh, I'm not gonna share it with you. We'll find out when we get there. Because I'm you know I'm trying to you trying to keep it leak free, but they didn't talk about Dendro's resonance, which was surprising because they had all that time to talk about it. Rest assured, Your Majesty, by my side, her safety will be secure. With no name or honor, how do you propose to protect her? Ended early. That was the whole planned stream. It didn't end early. The stream was. That was it. There were three. No, we never. I've already watched all the Sumeru teasers. We've never gotten anything about the resonance. What's up, Zurui? How you doing? Eager to step into the throne room. Nah, they didn't break the stream ended. They managed to do the whole stream. And even if they didn't manage to do the whole stream, I've already checked the whole YouTube version. They never mentioned it. Within the realm, only the most ignorant have not heard of the hero or given him a claim. You say you didn't know? Here, I'll tell you all about my name. But it's surprising that they didn't talk about it. You say you didn't know? Here, I'll tell you all about my Like, I really thought they were going to talk about Dendro Resonance. The often indecisive maybe some other Resonance. <laughs> but yeah, they didn't talk about it, which was surprising. Because they never mentioned it during the teasers. They never mentioned it... And, well, they never mentioned it, period. And I figured that was the time to talk about it. A phenomenal plan takes time to formulate. Use your brain, not your fists. You think I'm afraid? D don't discount my field expertise. And finally, our preeminent dragon slayer, Attendant C. Dragon slaying is a piece of cake, if you must ask me. The slayer recounted his many legends, showcasing spoils <laughs> for all to see. I mean, it's not a topic that you really have to talk about once you know what it is much, so. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was surprised they didn't talk about the Dendro Resonance. I feel like that was some, that was a missed opportunity. Especially, also, I, why, why do you guys feel like they went over the lore so much at the beginning? Now, don't get me wrong, I get why, partially why they did it, because they wanted people to understand the story leading up to Sumeru, especially if they didn't read, like, the Genshin Impact manga or something, right? They talked about some of the details in the manga that people who haven't read it were, wouldn't be privy to, but... Like, then they started going into a lot of, like, Sumeru's actual, like, you know, lore and story and background. And I was surprised. I was like, wait, shouldn't you, like, leave some of this? Like, shouldn't you leave a good chunk of this as a mystery for the players to find out once they finally, like, get into the game? I wasn't, I wasn't, like, for the lore heads, it was awesome. But for the most part, it was pretty good. But I was just surprised, like, they covered so much story. Like, we learned a lot. Like, we already know what Tainari's story quest is going to be about. A, a we, learned, we learned a lot. <laughs> My plan will make it flee with its tail between its legs. Friends, you make fair points, but you may not even have to fight. My slaying prowess is acclaimed throughout our land. The dragon will tremble and scram. But that's the thing when we got to inazuma right inazuma was a nation of that aired in mystery like we didn't know why the raiden shogun was keeping the nation as it was and we had to find that out through the story and eventually we all did you know what i mean but sumeru they gave a lot away <laughs> destiny has brought me hither 
Paimon, Tr Anyway, pl you can watch them and when the final stage. He says there are far more acts after this. If we see a stage on the island, shall we go check it out? I mean, there's going to be more. It is going to be three whole patches for the full story. That's true. But I'm just surprised that they spent so much time on that aspect of, you know, the stream. Now, some arguments I've seen is they they kind of spread. They said too much too early, like the teasers, right? By having the Sumeru teasers so early, it kind of like took away a lot of the information they could have talked about during the actual stream. And honestly, that was a valid point. I completely didn't even think about that. The teasers did cover a lot of information, all three of them. So it is kind of valid that they didn't really, you know, have much left to discuss once they got to the, you know, well, okay, not much left to show. Let me say show because they discussed there was there was nothing but discussion but there wasn't much to show and that's the thing a lot of people were complaining that it was mostly talking and not a lot of showing the princess and her entourage quickly arrived the princess loyal knight was the first to spot the creature for he always rode far ahead see i don't see them releasing another any more teasers I feel like the three teasers, the promotional video, I feel like that's it. That's all we're going to get. You know what I mean? Before the king to not let the princess come to harm. Mayhap our tactician can succeed. That's how I'm feeling about it. Uh personally though, I feel like the 3.0 live stream while it didn't do the greatest job of getting all the information without a plan that I feel should have been shared out there. I do feel like it's not it should people shouldn't take that as a one to one for the patch. Just because the live stream wasn't ideal doesn't mean while the evil dragon rests. Just because the live stream wasn't ideal doesn't mean uh that the patch is going to be mid. And that's the one thing I hope people aren't mistaking. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the live stream wasn't the greatest. We've had better. But a lot of, like, I don't want people taking it as, oh, yeah, the patch is going to be garbage because the live stream is garbage. Nah. It, it's freaking Sumeru. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whole new region, great place to explore. And not to mention that it's going to be five weeks. So we're actually probably not going to have the typical content drought that we're used to at the end of a patch. Because you guys know what I mean. Like at the end of a patch, usually like the last two weeks, there's not really much to do for a patch anymore. But since the patch is going to be cut down to five weeks, like that, you know, the content drought that we're used to, uh, I don't think we're going to be experiencing that for a while. Which is going to be dope. But at the same time, it's giving people way less time to save because that's three weeks of saving that people won't get. Perhaps he is torn between myriad schemes. Through all faith and cynicism, the cautious tactician remained silent, his face one of dismay and gloom. You've been trying to get Yunjin? <laughs> Could have just waited till Lantern right. Oh, tactician, the dragon beckons. Please enlighten us about the stratagem. Stratagem? Uh, no stratagem can be perfected so quickly for a situation this grave. More time is vital. I mean, I get it. <laughs> but my thing is like, like you don't have Yunjin at all. Four patches away. That's like December. Yeah, you should have just waited till Lantern Ride and got your free copy. It was simply feigning sleep to lure us into peril. Or are you doing it because you need Yomiya? Be shook 
where he stood, stopping just short from falling to his knees. He muttered and apologized, then ran away to the gate without hesitation. You just razor? I get it. I mean, yeah, it's really just any normal attack character. The princess and her loyal servant rushed off to find him while the dragon broke into laughter. <laughs> <laughs> if the king had chosen to I mean, it'd be like that sometimes. Been able to enjoy such a scene. All right. But real talk. Um, let's get back on topic. Seeking servant, the princess Thoughts about Dendro. How do you guys feel about the Dendro element? I want to hear your thoughts about Dendro. You guys think, feel like it's going to be good, bad? Machine gun element? Mirage belies the tactician's wisdom. What may I call on to keep my kingdom safe? The element of surprise. I find that'll bring a huge tier list difference. The thing is this. I don't expect Dendro to like. Not right away at least. I don't expect Dendro right away to start making waves. I think Dendro is one of those elements that it it's gonna depend on the quite visibly drunk on the character surprisingly than the actual element for the princess i must fight i feel like dendro is one of those elements that it's more about uh the character than the element like don't get me wrong Coley and tainari are going to be a nice introduction to dendro but I feel like we won't really understand how strong Dendro is until we get a few more characters out. Tacticians, what a boatload of nonsense. My eyes are dim now, my ears ring. Why did they say share your disagreements? To take on a dragon. Though the young god learned much from his senior. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I don't think the element like to I don't I like don't get me wrong. Like there are some characters that depend on their element. And then there are some characters that depend on themselves. Right? Like Geo. Right? You don't really care what Geo does reaction wise. The element really isn't doing anything. But the characters in Geo are a whole nother matter. Those guys are crazy. But when I look at Dendro, I'm like, okay, burning, mm, burning's okay. Virgin, we don't really know the scaling, but I'm thinking everything's going to be transformative reactions. So aggravate, spread, aggravate though, aggravate and spread might be busted. We'll have to wait and see. Personally, I think Dendro Traveler and Coley are going to be linchpins for a lot of Dendro reactions. Dendro Traveler, probably for, um, like, if you want to do Virgin reactions, Dendro Traveler seems like ideal. Just apply some Hydro. Uh, and then Coley, I mean, she literally has an elemental burst that's just AoE Dendro application. So that's what you want.
the problem okay but the thing is this with Burgeon right you would think Yomiya is good with Burgeon right but the problem I'm thinking about for Burgeon with Yomiya is that Yomiya doesn't really have a method of spreading pyro to get to the seeds now I don't know how how close you have to be to the seed to activate you know a Burgeon hit I mean, we saw Yan Fei. She just threw her elemental skill along the path of the seed in the freaking demo, and then boom. But Yoomiya's not throwing a fireball. She's throwing a fire arrow. So I don't know if it's going to have the same amount of area that it covers whenever it travels. Shit, I don't even, I don't even know who wants this to grab. Let me take this out here. I must fight. With everyone gone, I am the last line of defense. I must save the kingdom from. from... Like I'm thinking, like for those Burgeon reactions, Jang Link, good. Toma, good. Like, cause they have really big. They have pretty decent sized AOE. Cle, Cle even, Cle even. She has really big hitboxes on her elemental skills burst. She has, she has a lot of hitboxes. Uh, the show must go on. Should I find someone to take his place? But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, extending her burst duration will be good, but the thing is, like, how, like, okay, so what? That's like five hits, and then you have to make sure that the blooms are properly around them. Now, that might be good for, like, Venti. If you put Venti into the mix, like, uh, Kokomi, Venti, Koli. Yomiya. Yomiya Burst, Venti Cyclone, well, Yomiya, Kokomi, Venti Cyclone, the Hydro. Uh, then you throw Coley's thing on top bottom while the thing's going off. There you go. That could work. But I don't know, like, how many people are going to go through the trouble of trying to incorporate that consistently. And also, if you do that route, then... You're going to, well, you could drop Venti and try like Bennett. Bennett, or I guess Unjin, depending on if you want to keep her damage output going. But I'm just wondering, like, is it really worth the sacrifice of two slots to get, oh, Shiza, to get a proper uh, bloom going? I mean, you could do single target blooms too, but then that's the problem. It's single target blooms. Like, so you can bring Seen Cho or Ye Lan. It was not too bad, though. It'll, it'll come down to testing. Coley, though, I feel like is going to be a... Let me grab him. Coley, though, I feel like she's going to be... Coley and Dendro Traveler are going to be a linchpin for heavy Dendro reaction teams, in my opinion. Tainari... He'll be good if you want to set up. He, he's more of like a boss killer, in my opinion. Like, you could still do Dendro reactions with him, but that man's really made to kill kill things. Single target. Like, he's a boss killer, for my opinion. No, we haven't talked about artifacts yet. I feel like Tainari is definitely... You know what? Forget this gameplay, man. Hold on, let me finish this mission real quick. And then... Let's uh let's let's watch some we could we could pull we could pull up some stuff. Let's pull up some stuff. Hold on, let me let me pop 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 out. This. Let me finish this. I can finish this tomorrow. It's not a big deal. Let's talk in more detail. Let's let, let's get into the nitty gritty about it. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm not half paying attention. So let me finish this and then we'll get into more detail about it. The late arrival let out a resigned sigh. Even as the dragon raised the stake. I mean, Anemo is trash without four piece Veridescent. Let, let's not play ourselves now. I mean, Kazu was good, but four VV set is kind of what makes the element. If I had worked harder during training, I wouldn't feel so helpless today. So you're saying you feel like Dendro is Dendro isn't gonna be anything without the artifact set? You did well, 
I don't think I don't think Dendro goes that far. Okay, so like, okay. The thing about VV though, Swirl is a really good reaction because you can use it to proc more elemental reactions, not to mention help you apply elements to other enemies around the like that are around. Swirl is a very powerful reaction. But then when you threw VV on top of it, it made it that you could legit lower the resistances for everything you swirl. Everything out there that you swirl, boom. You're lowering the resistance, which means more damage. And it does it for four elements. While the Dendro set is good, don't get me wrong, it's literally only for Dendro. You know what I mean? Okay, I finished this. First, I'm talking, kitchen. <sighs> Let me get some background music. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Get some, pull up these teasers. Um, teaser three. This up two. I'm gonna pull up. What else we gotta pull up? Teaser two. And we'll talk about teaser. This is the most important one right now. Here we go. Okay, so Zongli. Zongli is going to be huge. This is this is where Zongli <laughs> Zongli, this man decided I'm not done yet. The fact okay, there there are two characters that they that they've added in these reruns that are gonna be huge for some Dendro team comps. First off, Zongli. Zongli, don't forget, Zongli has Omni. Omni shred and what what Omni shred means is that he can shred all elements by just being near enemies with his shield on so you, you guys already know that he does it for the six elements but how it's phrased within the game it, he can also do it for dendro so once dendro finally gets introduced zongli is going to shred that resistance yes he does that he does do that. Here, let me let me pull up Zongli. Oh yeah, wiki Zongli. We'll use the official wiki. Show some love. <laughs> There he is, Zongli.
Okay, so where is it? Only max HP. Oh, must be here. This right here, Jade Shield. This is part of his elemental skill. So when you have the shield on, possess 150% damage absorption against all elemental and physical damage. Characters protected by the Jade Shield will decrease the elemental resistance and physical resistance of opponents in a small AoE by 20%. This effect cannot be stacked. So yeah. Zongli has Omni Shred on his shield. So that means all enemies near him when he uses his Jade Shield, sorry, his Dominus Lapidus, he will shred their resistance by 20%. And this also will apply for Dendro as well. So having Zong Li will be your four, like, uh, if you don't have the Dendro artifact set, Zong Li will be your only other form as of right now, until we learn more, until we probably get a character that does it. As of right now, without that Dendro artifact set, he's your only other form of shredding Dendro resistance yeah so zongli is he, i mean he we already knew he was future proof zongli zongli has been future proof because of this this is like <laughs> this is how they made him super future proof i mean also he has the best shield in the game but still he's super future proof because of this um so it's great so that means whatever, whatever team you're going to run with Dendro, you can play Bloom, you can play Catalyzed, you can play Burning, whatever. Zongli is gonna shred it, so your damage is just gonna do more. Period, which is dope. It's really dope. So Zong is gonna be huge. So this is one of the major reasons I believe that they reran Zongli. Another character that they re that they're gonna rerun, even though she literally just had a rerun recently, is gonna be Kokomi. Now, there's a reason I'm saying Kokomi is gonna be huge. Unfortunately, I can't go into too much detail about it because the other character that's going to be taking her place hasn't officially been announced, nor do we know what her kit is. But we could talk about that later. But for now, the main thing that you need to know is that until that other character is released, Kokomi is going to be probably the best go-to character for AoE Hydro application in order to provide you a bunch of bloom reactions so that you can get the seeds like dropping on the floor like nonstop. Kokomi's jellyfish hydro application is insane, not to mention every time it does a pulse, it applies hydro. So if you, you like, let's say you put a team together like, Venti Kokomi Coli, right? Right there. You Venti, get the Hydro swirling, you got the jellyfish next to him, and then you just drop Coli's burst on top of it, throwing some floral rings while you're in there. You're gonna get a bunch of bloom going. Like a bunch of bloom. I mean, you can do something else with like that. You don't even need Venti to do it, but that's just another way of going about it if you really wanna get like an insane amount of application going. So Kokomi right now is going to be huge. And when I say huge, I mean huge for Dendro. She's going to be probably one of the best characters for setting up uh, a lot of... She's going to be one of the best characters for setting up a lot of... Hold up. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Garage door. Uh, no, but for real, she's going to be one of the best characters for setting up a lot of bloom reactions for Dendro. So that's probably why Kokomi is getting a rerun. Now, in the case of Gan Yu, I don't know. I'm guessing she probably is getting a rerun because Zongli is getting one. <laughs> but yeah, those two, 
I though Kokomi and Zong Lee are, in my opinion, super strategic reruns that are going to be super beneficial. Now, am I sitting here telling you to get Kokomi? No. Am I sitting here telling you to get Zong Lee? No. At the end of the day, do you? But if you're wondering, that's the thing, Zynex. I don't know if Burning's gonna be as good as we hoped because there might be some changes. So I'm not saying anything yet, but I'm not gonna sit there and talk about it until we know what change if the change occurred or not. Because there, there, there's been some sussy things happening with the burning uh, pyro aura. <laughs> so we have to wait until then to determine if burning's actually gonna be good for reverse melt or not. Because it might not be. It would be unfortunate if they made that change, especially after they've already set up burning within the game state, but we'll have to wait and see because they they might actually end up being changed for the pyro aura. Um, so yeah, those two, I can definitely say, uh, are going to be set on you. It's still in the air. If she's going to be as good as we were hoping, because if they make the change that we think that they're making, uh, it, Ganyu might not be viable anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know about the other resonance. That's not Dendro, but they didn't talk about that either. So we're not going to talk about that. But Kokomi is going to be huge for that resonance as well. Um, other than those, those rerun banners. Those rerun banners are going to be pretty useful. So if you do want the, if you already wanted those characters beforehand and you were planning on getting them on the rerun, more power to you because those characters are going to be super, super, super useful. So now let's let's jump over here. So let's talk about um, talk about Tainari for a little bit. All right, so this boy right here, right? In the case of Tainaro, where do I go with Tainari? Obviously Tainari, Dendro DPS, charge attack playstyle, you saw it in the thing. Um. I'm not expecting Tainari to do a bunch reaction wise. Now, that does that mean that I don't expect him to do like reactions at all? No, he's still going to be a pretty good choice for reactions. But I feel like Tainari's main focus really comes to his ability to kill a single target. You saw his, you know, chart. You saw his arrows. They freaking zoom in on the enemy, everything. I feel like Tainari, it's really going to come down to boss killing. Like he's going to be really good at killing single targets, uh, which is going to be weird because a lot of people like to equate him to Gan Yu. Now, I don't know how his arrows are going to work once it kills a target. I don't know if they're going to just jump to the next target. I don't know, like once you tag an enemy with the first arrow, if you know, they, the arrows just keep heat seeking that first target and just go nonstop. You think the others will be way better than him? I mean, there's a potential for that, or they just wanted to, you know, increase the standard banner pool because they knew that uh, whales were getting tired of getting their C20 Chi Chi's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're going to have to see how the AI for the arrows work. I don't know if they're going to spread out and pick multiple targets. I don't know if you like pin the first target with the first arrow, if they're all going to like go uh, nonstop at them. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, my main thing about Tainari, he doesn't seem like he's super focused on doing 
like from what I've seen, his elemental skill, I think that only does one application of Dendro when it does its first initial hit. I haven't seen anything to really say otherwise. Uh, they, I feel like they would have mentioned it during his thing, but he does have a taunt. But yeah, I'm thinking he's really single target focused. I mean, he has that taunt so he can probably keep groups of enemies away from him. So he has time to do his charge attack against whatever the main target is. Obviously, that taunt's probably not going to work against bosses. And I mean, it's never worked against bosses with anybody else. So why would it work now? But um, it's going to be interesting. I just feel like he's really, really, really focused on this one thing. And then when he does do a reaction, he does good damage. But I don't think he's like the character that's going to be trying to drive like a whole group reaction and like, you know, make something crazy happen on the field reaction wise just joined will you be oh yeah i'll be pulling him i'll be pulling him i i, I pulled everybody <laughs> so i'll be pulling him so I, I don't really have much to say on tainari i feel like it's definitely just a wait and see kind of thing for him now i do want to talk about dory a bit sorry not dory i want to talk about coley coley i feel is gonna be huge i feel like coley's gonna be a really really big deal for uh dendro now i think like she's gonna be like a good placeholder with the dendro traveler until more dendro characters come out kusanali who probably will come out in 3.2 um we also have i mean al -Hytham, he's dendro i don't know when he'll come out but yeah, I feel like Coley's gonna be really big for a lot of us. And the best part is that she's free. So her elemental burst is um, AOE. It's gonna be really solid for just like setting up a big group reaction, especially against multiple enemies. Still will be good against bosses as well. Uh, but yeah, I think Coley's going to be a solid pickup for most of us. I don't think Coley's gonna be a bad pickup and the fact that she's going to be free, there's no reason to complain about getting her anyway. <laughs> but no, I, I really feel like Coley's going to be a linchpin in a lot of teams. That's the thing, Dream. Like, we can talk about it, but we don't really know until we actually get in there. Now, we presume a lot of these reactions. OK, so quickening. OK, hey, at, uh, what is it? Aggravate slash spread or quickening. Quickening is the catalyze. Yeah, quickening is catalyze. So quickening, I expect to be something transformative. But as for aggravate and spread, we'll have to see what the final scaling is before we can really make a judgment on it. But I feel like, again, just the fact that Coley has AOE dendro application, she should be able to apply her dendro all at once against a group of enemies thanks to it. She should be good for setting up big Dendro reactions for your team until, you know, later Dendro characters come out like the Kusanali, like Kusanali. Dendro Traveler should be good too, from what we've seen so far. But I feel like Coley's gonna be really good if you just wanna like get like 10 enemies together and just make something crazy happen. Uh, do they have Dory in here? Dory, 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 Dory. Wait, they talk about Tainari. There it is. Dory. Okay. I have no idea what we're going to do with Dory. All I know is that she heals and she gives energy back with her elemental burst. So I'm thinking the name of the game with Dory is simple. Get her a burst back. Dory seems like one of those characters that you want to keep her burst on the field as much as possible. I think that's just going to be the linchpin of her play style. Oh, she also heals. Yeah, she also does heal. Yeah, yeah. Wait, didn't I mention the healing? Read her artifact. But yeah, in the case of Dory, I think ER 
<laughs> yeah, I was about to be like, what artifact? <laughs> ER is the name of the game. Now, does this mean that you have to go and get emblem? I don't think so. I think that you just want to make sure that you have enough ER on her. I think Dory could be good for setting up like aggravates or quick catalyze or spread. You know what I mean? The electro reactions based on Dendro. <laughs> Deha. So, uh, yeah, that is going to get you banned, Grim. <laughs> Watch yourself. Nah, um, so in the case of Dory, it's going to be really big for reaction, electro reactions. Um, but I do feel that she is going to be all about her burst. From what I see, <laughs> from what I've seen, it seems like the burst is her main call to action. Well, Grim, you know how I feel about that. <laughs> I, you have been warned. So, uh, yeah, I think honestly, I don't know what to think of Dory. The problem is we don't know how much she heals. We don't know how much energy she recharges. It's no, we can't say anything until she's officially released, but it seems like she's really going to be there to help drive reactions, give energy and heal you. But in order to do all of this, well, she needs her burst, which means that she's going to need a sizable amount of energy recharge. And again, this does not mean that you should go and build emblem for her. I'm not saying that because we don't even know if her burst will do that much damage to begin with. The scaling might be horrible. But what I am trying to say is that energy recharge sands, energy recharge weapon, those might be really, really good for her because she it's all about her burst. Now, the thing is this, we don't know what her official burst cost is gonna be. Her burst cost could be 40. So then energy recharge might not even be needed. Her burst cost could be 80, which you're gonna need quite a bit of energy recharge to make it, you know, nonstop. But it's gonna come down to how much uh, she needs. Yeah, she might ascend with ER, but ER is gonna be important for her. That's the main thing. ER is going to be important for her because it's all about the burst. But yeah, those are like my, you know, three quick run throughs, three quick run th run throughs of the characters from what I've seen. Um, That's true. But the question is, like, are you going to run two electro characters for the resonance with your team? Okay, we, we gotta kind of be careful about that because not all Electro characters gain crazy ER. I mean, look at Beto. <laughs> Beto is one of the most energy hungry Electro character, one of the best Electro characters in the game, but she's the most energy hungry of them all. I mean, even Yaimiko doesn't do a very great job of regenerating her energy. Now, the thing is that luckily, Electro has something called Fischl and the Raiden Shogun, so. Um, everything's kind of mute before them. Those two fix any energy issues. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. I don't want to go making any claims until, you know, everything's official. Everything's official. We can actually see it in action and we can be like, oh, boom. Because again, Dory's burst could be like 40 costs for all, you know, and then you don't need much energy for that even if she doesn't generate much particles. You know what I mean? Just throw a Favonius sword on one of your teammates or something and you're done. <laughs> but overall, overall, um, I will say that those three characters, while they are like, you know, their first introduction to, sorry, first introduction to Sumeru, I don't feel like we can properly ju judge uh, Dendro just off of those three until we get more characters. I feel like there's going to be more characters from Sumeru that are going to be based around like the Dendro reactions 
and we won't really get to see dendro in all of its glory welcome blueberry skies we won't really get to see dendro in all of its glory until that happens so i feel like while we will get that initial view of dendro we won't see how strong dendro can actually be until like obviously kusanali drops until like maybe nilo drops until deha drops i'll hype them drops you know these characters that we've been seeing sino drops i feel like dendro is going to be one of those elements that characters are going to make it much better much much better it's gonna have a solid base but it's going to be character dependent in order to get to its true value off topic but didn't think nilo just do what they did in the <laughs> the dragon prince i haven't watched it. i mean i'm still waiting for season three of the dragon prince um i didn't even think about that uh, i'll have to see it when it loops back um but yeah the one thing i'm scared of is that people are going to assume dendro is this or that before we really get to see the full picture you know like like uh, okay let's be real can we is, is it even fair to like say dendro is garbage until we get kusanali like let's be real i i feel like any opinion until kusanali at least drops you can't really judge this element because kusanali is probably going to be if she lives up to the archon title a linchpin for the element that's true yeah exactly dendro's new but you know the problem is that people are going to judge it people are going to say oh dendro's not going to change the meta now the thing is, is i don't expect dendro to change the meta like i don't expect dendro to come in and be like the new ish like this is the best for everything dendro teams but i do expect dendro to shift it like i feel i expect some dendro comps to come up and be able to compete with the comps that we already have yeah exactly people are gonna but people are gonna judge and i feel like dendro is just gonna be one of those elements that you can't purely judge you can't really judge it until more of the cast from sumeru comes out I mean, Mona good though. <laughs> Mona busted. <laughs> Mona busted. Um, no, uh, but let, 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 but this isn't about Mona. Um, <clears throat> about him being standard. It is interesting how they decide to put him in standard. This make only Inazuma doesn't have a character. Honestly, I think the reason that they're putting him in standard is because, well, first off. They're probably gonna be releasing a lot of characters to begin with, right? For Sumeru. They're probably gonna drop quite a few characters for the next few patches in order to, you know, help get the characters out. By putting him on standard, that's one less character to rerun. Yeah, and also it's a bonus for players because let's be real, some players might be tired of getting just Chi Chi, Kaching, Duluk, Jean, or uh, Mona. Some players even have them all maxed at c6 i'm not one of them but there are players who have all of them maxed so by throwing tidari into the mix it will help you know just change things up and give people a chance at something new not to mention let's be real i don't think anybody's gonna be mad about losing a 50 50 to tainari or like the first few patches because he's new it's gonna be dope It'll shift the men in a way that we haven't seen before. I mean, yeah, I feel like Dendro's going to shift the meta, but the question, but I don't think that it's going to come in. Like, I feel like some people are looking at Dendro like, okay, Dendro's going to come in and it's going to take over everything. I don't think Dendro's going to come in and just take over the meta. I don't think Dendro's going to be like the go-to for everything. I feel like Dendro, what it's going to do, there's going to be maybe two or three comps that come in 
and that are going to be able to compete with the best comps that we already have now. And yeah, some of the current comps might go down in value because the Dendro comps might perform better. But I don't believe Dendro is going to come in and just like bulldoze everything. Like a lot of people are expecting like a major meta shift from Dendro. Like it's just going to come in and like take over. I don't think that's the case. I think Dendro is going to find itself a nice little niche here or there and then come in and be good. The, what, what I'm really worried about is that some people think that Dendro is going to be garbage. Now, and that's the thing. I feel like you can't judge Dendro until more characters come out. Because I've again, I'm saying this and I know I've been saying this multiple times, but I feel like Dendro is going to be a character dependent element. Like once you get a few good characters that are out that really make Dendro go burr, then it's like, OK, this is Dendro's true potential. That's how I feel. I just wish they update the standard banner more often. That's true. I do wish they update it more often. <laughs> to the path of C6. Yeah, not everybody's been so lucky to not get a bunch of chichis. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I'm feeling about it. Now, the thing is this. When Sumeru releases and Dendro is out and, you know, the theory crafters get to work and then, you know, everything goes ham. There are going there's going to be people saying Dendro is garbage. Let, let's let's just be honest. There are going to be people. That's true, Kaching. That's true. There are going to be. But yeah, there are going to be people who are going to throw some Dendro slander because they feel that Dendro at, a, at the current state in 3.0 isn't worth it, you know? But in my opinion, I feel like it's still too, too, it's just too early to judge until at least the Dendro Traveler comes out. Once the Dendro, sorry, not Dendro Traveler, once the Dendro Archon comes out, I feel like by the time the Dendro Archon comes out, we'll have a clear picture of what Dendro can actually do. It might not be the final picture, but it'll be a general, we'll have a really good idea at that point. You know what I mean? And also Dendro could only get better, could possibly only get better with the release of more Dendro characters because more characters means more potential for different play styles and different team comps. Aggravate, yeah, Aggravate's gonna be huge, hopefully for Dendro. Aggravate, spread, uh catalyze slash quicken a lot of people are hoping that that will change a lot of things for uh what's its name electro yeah it can happen it can happen like geo's geo's one of the prime examples of a horrible element but amazing characters i feel like dendro is going to be a good element by itself but it's not going to be like insane until you also put the characters on top of it i feel like dendro is going to be one of those it's going to be one of those elements where the characters and the element are both good and both of those things in tandem are what's going to make it great i feel like it's going to be like a half and half because from what we've seen so far of the dendro reactions they're pretty they're not bad there's a lot of potential. But at the same time, we're going to have to wait until we have characters that can properly utilize them to their maximum potential. That's how I feel. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think we've talked quite a bit about um, the reactions and everything. Let's move on. Let's talk about artifacts. I want to get to your th guys' thoughts and opinions. Now, where are these artifacts? I saw them earlier here. Boom! There we go. Artifacts. I like the EM artifact. I like. I actually like both of these sets. I like both of them so much. I think they're actually both really good. So we have uh, Deepwood Memories, which is the Dendro artifact set. 
Um, honestly, when I look at this artifact set, at first, at first, when I looked at this artifact set, I thought to myself, um, I thought to myself that this is going to be like Dendro DPS. But there's actually a really important feature that I didn't even think about for this set that could change it to also being a really, really good support Dendro set as well. So after the elemental, it's a four piece set. After the elemental skill or burst hits an opponent, the target's Dendro resistance will be decreased by 30% for three seconds. This effect can be triggered even if the equipping character is not on the field. Yeah, so that's that's the part that I didn't really realize was that good until like I sat down and read about it. That means that you can get dendro resistance from an off field dendro character, even when they're not there, as long as they, you know, hit the enemy with the elemental skill or burst. So yeah, Coley could be Coley could be good with it. Dendro Traveler could be good with it. And the, the main reason I'm bringing this up is because that means that like, let's say you have Tainari and Coley, right? Let's say that originally you wanted Tainari to use deep wood memory, but you felt, but you don't have like an ideal set. That means you can still use something like Wanderer's Troop for Tainari or even Shimanawa's if that's how you're feeling, right? So you can use those sets and then you can just give like an okay or decent deep wood memories to Coley. Coley throws her boomerang or does her elemental burst. While something else is on the field, Tainari comes in. He still benefits from the Dendro resistance. Sure, he doesn't have the 15% Dendro damage bonus, but with the fact that Coley's already giving him the four-piece bonus for the Dendro resistance, he can he's going to, with the new with the artifacts that he has on, he's gonna make up for not having that Dendro damage bonus and not carrying the set. So it actually opens up a lot of build paths for your characters. Your Dendro DPS does not actually need to have the Deep Wood Memories on. So that's actually pretty dope. Because when I first was looking at this set, I was thinking, okay, this is a must have on Tainari. But now that I'm looking at this set, I'm like, okay, I can do Wanderer's Troop Tainari with some EM and then charge attack bonus damage. And then I can just give this set to Coley or Dendro Traveler and I'll still get the Dendro resistance. Yeah, it might be great for Kusanali. So yeah, like basically the main thing I'm trying to say about Deep Wood Memories is don't think it's just for your Dendro DPS. It can still be used for its four piece bonus for a Dendro support character. So it's actually really cool. And also, did you notice something? It doesn't even say that it has to be, I don't think it even has to be a Dendro character that could use it. Now, ideally, you really wouldn't want to use it without it being a Dendro character or your two piece set is dead. So it's like unspoken rules. It should be a Dendro character, but it doesn't say that it has to be a Dendro character. All it says is that after elemental skill or burst hits the opponent, the target's Dendro resistance will be decreased by 30 percent. That's it. Now, it should be a Dendro character. I don't know why you would do it for anybody other than a Dendro character, because your two-piece set would be dead. But, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 the fact that it's actually a thing is really huge. So you only need one character on your team to have this. So you only need one character on your team to have this. And honestly, that's it. You only need one person on the team to really have this set on. I mean, you can have two. But the fact that a character can be off field and still give you the four piece bonus is huge for the Dendro resistance shred. Okay, so now let's talk about Guild of Dreams. This artifact set. Uh, how do I do talk about this one? It's a good set. I just I'm, I'm I like I've just been like kind of theory crafting in my head some of the potential for it. Yeah, it's good for mono teams. It's good for reaction teams. Yeah, like it's it's a good all around set. Like so, I was thinking about it for like characters like Coley again. Actually, Coley again. We could talk about Coley again for this example. Like if you have Coley on a team where she's by herself, right? 
it will give her a bunch of EM. Literally, it'll give her like what? 150 EM plus the 80. So she'll have 230 EM from just the set alone. Sorry, no, no. Yeah, yeah. 230 EM from just this set alone. That's a lot of EM, y'all. You give her like, you give her this set, throw her on a team where she's by herself. She's the only Dendro character. Then you, like, like let's say you give her an EM weapon like stringless or something that's like what 160 em on top of that so you're already at like 400 em right there just chilling 400 em from just having a weapon and an artifact set that's a lot and that's gonna be insane for like your elemental reactions and then the best part is that even if she goes on a mono team she'll be able to get like attack so she'll be like if she goes on a mono dendro team like all four dendro she gains 30, no, 42 attack, 42% attack increase. So it, it's actually a really good set. And the best part is that it adjusts depending on your team. So I could definitely see characters, like some characters I could see with this set. Yai Miko, I could actually see her with this set. I know a lot of people would be like, but Emblem. And Emblem is still good for her. Um, you can even do uh two piece thundering, two piece attack. Uh, but this set could be really good for Yai Miko. She gets the EM bonus, not to mention she still gets the attack bonus. Then you just focus a little bit of her stats on her crit rate, crit damage. And I mean, she gets to go to work, not to mention the EM bonus is still going to help her do more damage. Um, so it, it's gonna be interesting, honestly. The gilded buff the user or a buff to the party it's the user it's buff to the user um here i could read it within eight seconds of triggering an elemental reaction the character equipping this will obtain buffs based on the elemental type of the other party members attack is increased for by 14 percent for each party member whose elemental type is the same as the equipping character an elemental mastery is a is increased by 50% for every party member with a different elemental type. Each of the aforementioned buffs will count up to three characters. This effect cannot be triggered once. This effect can be triggered once every eight seconds. The character who equips this can still trigger its effects when not on the field. That's it. And then two pieces, just 80%, uh, sorry, plus 80 elemental mastery. <clears throat> Yeah, so Yai Miko's going to be good for it. At first, I was thinking Kuki Shinobu might be good for it, but I'm, I'm only really thinking it's worthwhile on Kuki Shinobu if you're willing to do the EM side of it. The attack side, not so much. Kuki doesn't really benefit from the attack part of it, but if you're definitely trying to get the EM side of it, Kuki Shinobu will be... This will actually be really, really good for her because it gives her so much extra EM. Um, Lisa, Lisa could use this. Uh, honestly, any character that is really good for reactions can use this. Yeah, so honestly, any character that you know that you can set up like really good reactions can use this set. I mean, I could definitely see people trying it with like Fischl. I could see people trying it with, uh, there's a lot of Electro characters I could see people running this. Dory. I could see Dory running this, actually, especially if she doesn't need that much ER to begin with. Um, Coley, obviously, Dendro Traveler could use this, too. The, what I really like about these Dendro sets is these two sets is that they're pretty. Uh, they're pretty versatile. They can be used by characters that want to be on field, off field. They're really focused on uh, really just achieving how do i say this in the case of the gilded set i really like it because it's just a versatile set it's good if you want to do a character that does some um, damage with a little bit of em if you want a character that's hella focused on em and not attack at all it's a good set not to mention it could be used off field then you have the dendro set which is great for dendro characters if they want to be a main dps but also can be used for Dendro supports if they just want to help support the Dendro main DPS so they can run on a different set that will be more viable for them to increase their damage output. 
and you can still use the four piece effect for the dendro resistance so uh no that's the thing both of these artifacts can literally be used for dps or supports that's the thing these artifacts are versatile if you want the artifacts to be used for dps focused characters they can be used if you want the artifacts to be used for support characters especially support characters that are off field they can be used they're still both really viable like that's the cool thing about these dendro artifacts well these sorry these sumeru artifacts like keep saying dendro artifacts these sumeru artifacts like they're really really good and both of them focus on uh well one focuses on dendro and the other one focuses on reactions Reaction slash damage, but it, it Gilded Dreams is really a reaction set at the end of the day. It's a good alternative to uh, what's its name? Wanderer's Troop. Because I know a lot of people were thinking maybe if they release another Elemental Mastery set, we can do like Wanderer's Troop two piece with like Gilded Dreams two piece. But honestly, Gilded, Gilded Dreams uh, four piece is so busted that using two piece, two piece, Wanderer's Troop. I mean, two piece, two piece with Wanderer's Troop is kind of pointless because with the four piece, uh, you can literally get a hundred extra by just having two different elements from your teammate. And then you still get the 14 percent uh, attack bonus for your third character. Let's say it's another double Dendro. So, yeah, not to mention, we still don't know what Dendro Resonance is, but if I had to guess, it's probably going to be something regarding Elemental Mastery. So you're probably going to have a bunch of extra EM on top of that, which is dope. <laughs> yeah, if, Den if the Dendro Resonance ends up being Elemental Mastery Resonance, let's just say this is the age of Elemental Mastery and Elemental Mas like having EM is not going to be an issue for you a lot of your dendro comps which means that you probably won't have to build em as much for you know your typical reactions like let's be real a, the, a lot of a lot of the reaction comps that we build today we have to you know dedicate sometimes an artifact or a weapon in order to hit the uh, amount of elemental mastery that we want but with the introduction of like the Guild of Dreams and now the uh, and possibly the Dendro Resonance, not to mention whatever else Sumeru has to offer. Um, you might not have to build. You might not actively have to chase EM like you used to before, which means that you can put um, your stats into other things like attack, crit rate, crit damage, which will help you just do more damage overall, which is going to be pretty dope. So it's going to be interesting seeing how all of this is implemented and the characters that typically you wouldn't build with EM will still have a good chunk of EM just by being in the party. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, but I feel like I feel like it's going to be one of those. Mess around with it and see what happens thing. But I do feel like the Dendro artifacts are pretty good. I feel like they're pretty good. They're pretty versatile. They can be used in, a mul in multiple different ways and they're not limiting, which is how I wish more artifacts were designed. We don't have enough artifacts that are designed like this, that are versatile and can be used in you know different ways. A lot of our artifacts that we have today are very, very linear in use. They're very one dimensional. You have to use them a certain way or they just they don't work. You know what I mean? But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good about uh, the artifacts. I feel like the artifacts are just really, really solid. Unfortunately, they didn't share any details on the weapons. We just know what they look like. I wish we had more details. I don't know why we didn't get some details on this. This would have been dope, but we'll have to wait and see once they're released how they are. I'm kind of digging the designs for the craftables, though. All right, so I kind of went over the stuff I wanted to talk about for Dendro. I talked about the reactions. I talked about the characters. I talked about the artifacts. Is there anything else you guys want to discuss? The floor is yours. Throw up what you want to talk about.
ba -ba. Ba -ba. Bosses? Want to talk about the bosses? We can talk about the bosses. So are we talking about uh, which one we talk about? Jade Plume Terror Shroom, or we want to talk about the Electro Regis line? I mean, we can talk about both. The Chocobo. <laughs> Let's talk about the Jade Plume. So something cool about the Jade Plume Terror Shroom actually is that depending on where was it? They were talking about it earlier, but depending on. Yeah, here it is. So this boss right here. So depending on what you do against this enemy, it seems to change the enemy's appearance and also potentially their fighting style. So like right here, it seems to be normal. But then if you use like burning against it, hold on. Yeah, see, so now you see it looks different and it seems like it's using like. It might potentially be using like different attacks. Oh, wait, this thing summons enemies. Oh, my gosh. This thing summons minions. This thing summons minions. <laughs> what? That thing really summons minions. That's dope. How did a mushroom turn into a chocobo? It's amazing what happens in the world of Tibet. Uh, we haven't talked about comps yet. I feel like that's something we should save until a little. Well, actually, we could talk about comps, but we want we we're talking about the bosses. So it seems like it has a regular mode and then a, a, a burning mode. Actually, OK, so you see right here, it has like if you watch carefully, you see like it has leaves around it. So I think this is it like regular. And then right there, instead of leaves, it's burning. So, okay, burn. It looks like Pyro is going to be the name of the game against this thing, but I wouldn't be surprised. And then there's this. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing has some kind of like. Aggravate mode or not aggravate, like, you know how the. Um, you know how the uh, what's the name of the wolves, the freaking uh, Rift Hounds, the Rift Hounds. You know how they start acting up once you hit them with their element? I feel like it's going to be the same case with the Jade Plume. Once you start hitting it with Pyro, it might start doing more damage or maybe enter like a different state. So, yeah, you're doing more damage to it, but you're probably it's probably going to become a little bit stronger. As for the Electro Regisvine, it seems like. Related to the Dendro Slime. <laughs> It seems like it's really going to be come down to those flowers that it produces. Like basically just don't let the flowers touch or you're going to get a massive AOE that's going to hit you like a truck, probably. <laughs> but yeah. And then we have the ruined T-Rex gargoyle thingy. Um, Honestly, I mean, I, I don't think this one's going to be too much of a big deal. Every ruined enemy we get introduced to, we usually body. I don't think it's going to change much for that. Summon. So can Nahida summon minion too? I don't know. <laughs> we have no idea what Nahida can do. But yeah, honestly, that's what I'm thinking about for. Uh, in the case of bosses, I mean, it's pretty it's going to be still pretty straightforward. Uh, just go in there and slap them up. If you can't slap them up, get a friend to help you slap them up. The end. And then uh, as for team comps, there's so many potential team comps, like so many. So many. Actually, there's a video I wanted to watch. We can actually watch this together. I think that this video might be pretty informative. The Jeff. OK. I want to be careful because the Jeff covers leaks, but I don't want to I don't want to cover elite. Okay, let's see. Let's just let's just see what Zajef said. Let's just see what Zajef said. Let's see what Zajef said. 3.0 live stream.
stream. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using Mr. Salt's stream because the official fucking Genshin Impact channel doesn't actually save vaults. <laughs> yeah, no videos found. Uh, if you don't know uh, Mr. Salt's, he's a um a pretty pog. So if you tell oh my it god. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to a bit of a review of the 3.0 livestream. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Mr. Salt's stream because the official fucking Genshin Impact channel doesn't actually save vaults. Yeah, no videos found. Uh, if you don't know uh, Mr. Salt's, he's a, um, a pretty pog Genshin Impact guide maker and a homie. <laughs> you can say hi, Mr. Salt's, in the comments if you want. The reason why I want to do this is because there's actually a few things that, if you pay close attention to, have actually been confirmed about the combat system without them actually saying it. And I think they're very interesting, so I want to be I want to be talking about them. But yeah, and I, I mean, I guess might as well also give my thoughts on the patch in general. So they use they use the words polymorphic reactions. Don't bother with that shit. It just makes it sound more complicated than it is. It's basically just that there's two stages to your reactions. There's the main reaction, and the main reaction lets you trigger two sub reactions. There's two different reactions that have that, so that's a total of four different sub-reactions. Okay, there we go. So we get into combat stuff. Let's go. This is gonna be the run yeah. of the video. When it comes to changes to combat, we have to look at the dendro element and reactions related to it. We spoke about the three reactions related to dendro, so those are the three we have, the three main reactions. Right, burning, you already understand it, it's already in the game. So bloom reaction, which is uh, dendro and hydro, and I think they call it catalyze here, yeah. Forget Catalyze. They're gonna change to Quicken literally like a minute from now. I think this is a problem with the localization team. Pretend the word Catalyze is, a, is, is Quicken, not Catalyze. Catalyze is a, is a lie. It doesn't exist. Okay, so, <laughs> first, first is Bloom, right? When you Dendro and Hydro, creates a seed on the ground. That's it. Very, very straightforward. Then the seed itself, uh, if you let it stay there, it'll explode over time. Uh, or if you reach the maximum limit of seeds, which is five, it'll also explode. Basically, if you don't do anything with it, it's gonna explode eventually and deal damage. But you can also do something with it. And the things you can do with it are, uh, you can apply Pyro, like this, and it triggers Burgeon, it makes it explode for more damage. Or you can apply Electro and trigger Hyper Bloom to make it, exp uh, to make it like home into an enemy. Then we have Quicken, which is- Okay, so quick thing. It seems, Xynex, you might be right. It seems your Mia should be fine with uh, the doing Burgeon because Yanfei's fireball wasn't even that close. So I think it just needs to enter within a certain proximity of the seed in order for the seed to react. So your Mia might be good with Burgeon. Might be. We'll see. Uh, but yeah. It seems like it just needs to be within a certain proximity in order for the reaction to actually occur. Is Dendro plus Electro puts enemy in a quickened state, and then your Electro and or Dendro attacks will start doing more damage to that enemy. And as you can see, we've got the visual effects of some like green lightning with leaves for a quickened enemies. Right? What I want you to pay attention to is this. I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but we actually have some green lightning and some electro lightning on the enemy at the same time. Some green and some purple. So what that means is you can have Quicken and Electro coexisting on an enemy, which means that things like the Thunder Soother set should potentially work with Electro. Or it's a kind of it's confirmation that the Thunder, Thunder Soother uh, set will potentially work with with aggravate characters. It won't work with all of them. It'll depend on how much application you have because sure, you can have Electro on them, but then you can also react with the Electro and remove it. So you won't have 100% uptime on it. But point is you can have it on the enemies and that's relevant. Now this one's a lot harder to see because we're not used to the Dendro visual effect, but look at what happens when you apply an enemy with Dendro. It has some like little leaves falling off. And it makes the leaves like go up outwards and shit. But when you just have Dendro in the enemy, it has some leaves falling off. And as you can see here, right, on this enemy, we also have the leaves slowly falling off. We don't. Just oh, I didn't even notice like that. Lightning and leaves going like. Dang! Look at you, the Jeff. Falling off, which <laughs> is the visual effect for enemies being affected. With I did not even notice so that. What this means is yes, you can have Quicken and Electro coexist, but you can also potentially have Quicken and Dendro coexist. 
In other words, Quicken is going to function like Freeze, just like I predicted, in terms of like how the aura mechanics work. Not how the reaction works, obviously, but how the how the game treats the auras is gonna function just like just like Freeze, which is which is cool. It, it means we can figure out a lot of this stuff uh, early on because we're used to Freeze mechanics. This, I don't think there's anything like that you will have missed, but we're basically getting official footage for Tafnadi, right? Which is nice. Uh, his E is kind of like Ganyu's E, more or less. His charge attack is kind of like a single target Ganyu charge attack. Yeah, and then see? his burst is like Ningguang's burst. That's kind of a good way to understand how he works. But obviously, he does, he's not Cryo or Geo, so he has the access to the Dendro reactions. Uh, from what we understand so far, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do a, a, a full character pre-release. I might as well actually talk about uh, what I know about the characters right now and what I expect out of the characters right now. So from what we understand, his initial shot applies Dendro and then one of his four cluster blooms will also apply Dendro. In other words, he's applying two instances of Dendro with his charge attacks, which is okay. If each hit applied Dendro, he would have been able to trigger spread a lot and it would have been like a lot of damage. Again, right, Quicken, mean when once the enemy is quickened your electro and dendro damage or elemental application will deal more damage and it's going to trigger respectively aggravate or spread and that's the more damage right and so the more spread you can trigger the more damage you can do and you don't need to keep reapplying electro as an aura you just need to apply dendro often enough that you don't lose the the debuff on the enemy so he's getting a certain amount of spread he's getting two spreads per uh charge salt with the cluster blooms his e right It's a taunt, but it also makes his next three charge attacks charge a lot faster. What this means is effectively, you go on the field with him, you use your Q and or your E, then the other one, and then you charge attack three times, and then you swap out. But yeah, so that, that means that effectively, right? He's gonna do E, Q, and then three charge shots, or Q, E, three charge shots. Usually you wanna E, Q on characters because it lets you pre-funnel your energy. But the reason why that's good is because after your E and your Q, you generally want to swap out. On characters like Tifnati that actually want to stay on the field to do his three charge attacks, you can QE because you're still staying on him after your E to get your three charge attacks out. So you don't actually need to EQ. You can QE if you want. Also, from what we understand, when you swap out of him, uh, he keeps like his, his three stacks on his faster uh his faster charge attacks which means that you can like do do eq then swap out to do something else and then go back to him and do your charge attack. oh snap this is like no no hold up i gotta watch this on my own time <laughs> that's 53 minutes nah okay i i ain't doing all that that's 53 minutes i just realized that this is a 53 minute video holy snap he went in oh yep there yeah, that goes in the leaks yeah he starts going to the leaks later but I actually did learn something from that. I'm going to keep that to myself later. But no, he did actually talk about something that I didn't even realize that there were um, actual, what's his name? Wait, so does that mean that that was in the Sumeru teaser one too? There's actually indicators for when you have Dendro on an enemy. Yeah, there it is, the falling leaves, like he was talking about. So there is a falling leaf indicator when you have Dendro on an enemy. That's actually pretty dope. That's actually going to be huge for, like, okay, so you actually get an indicator too. I mean, obviously you'll see the aura right above their head as well, but it's nice to see that there is one. And the fact that Electro can coexist with the Quicken reaction slash Catalyze is actually really interesting too. So that means you could probably do. Well, obviously, you could just add more Dendro and then just reapply Quicken and everything, but can't wait to see. <laughs> can't wait to use this info when I lose 50 50 and get Tainari. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's that's a Jeff video goes into a lot of detail about everything. But uh, it's getting pretty late over here. Is there anything else we want to discuss before uh, I head off? I know some people want to talk about team comps, but I feel like team comps would take hours because there's so many, so many different team comps you can try. Not to mention, it's kind of hard to really talk about, like, it would be just theory crafting. But once 
once Sumeru actually gets here, I plan to just try them. Like, because I have all the characters, so I just want to try team comps. So when Sumeru drops, if you want to if you want to see certain team comps in action, feel free to stop by and I'll try them on stream for you. I'll probably be streaming on here when that happens. But yeah. Overall, I, it was, I feel like dude, we, we discussed. I, I just wanted to really see what you guys were thinking about the whole, uh, you know, situation with Sumeru. Even though I only, we only really talked about the combat aspects, we didn't even talk about the story or char other characters or other, all that other stuff. But I feel like that stuff can be discussed in more detail after the patch comes out. Gonna stick with Coley until Kusadon. I mean, you should. Coley's free too. Also, can we just talk about that? The fact that they're giving away a free Coley is huge. Now you have to play during patch 3.0, get it, but it's huge because getting a free one really makes Tainari's banner a lot easier to, uh, to skip. Cause I know a lot of people were wondering like, oh, should I roll on Tainari's banner? But you get Coley for free and Tainari's gonna go to the standard banner, which means that you can get him from just losing a 50-50. So there's really no major incentive to roll on that banner unless you really, really just want Coley cons or you really, really just want Tainari. You know what I mean? So I think we're gonna see a lot of people not rolling on the banner right away, but hey, who knows? Maybe that banner is going to do make bank because it has Dendro characters on it. But I can see I can see a lot of people not using like a lot of rules on it. I don't think a lot of people are going to go crazy on the banner because Kusanali is still like around the corner. Not to mention you still have characters like Nilo and Sinnoh and Deha and Al Haitham that people are hyped for. I do feel kind of bad for Tainari in that aspect. I feel like he kind of got cheated on release this man went from oh yeah being like the premier start character for sumeru to being like eh, probably chilling having free coley helped me strengthen my decision i respect that had the hard skip you and me after realizing i'm not gonna have enough wishes for c2 anyways but bummed out I got other banner five star weapon. Was wondering who's good with it besides four star K. Oh, you mean Summit Shaper? Uh Albedo? You could throw it on Albedo. You could use it since he can make crystallized shields. Yeah. Albedo's really the only other character I would hardcore say that's good with that weapon. Because he can make crystallized shields really like Albedo's probably the best character at making crystallized shields. Yeah. So what you could do is like Albedo plus Goro. And then with Goro's elemental burst, it sucks in the crystallized shields. So it'll make having the shield on really easy, especially since Albedo's like stupid good at producing this, producing them. So yeah, Summit Shaper, I would say is probably best on Albedo in that case. So hopefully you have Albedo. Or, but at the same time, while Summit Shaper is good, we have the Cinnabar Spindle, which is awesome. And it's a four star, but it's free, which was epic. Um, so if you have that, I'd probably just keep using that over that. But if you really, really want to use the Summit Shaper so it doesn't sit there and collect dust, I would say Albedo's the key. Other than that, uh, I wouldn't really say it's all that useful on anybody else. Unless you want to just run like a sword character with Zongli. Maybe there will be another Geo Sword 4 star that comes out. Once that happens, that'll probably be a good slot in for them. Because, you know, 4 stars already really don't come with their own personal weapons anyway. So giving them a Summit Shaper would be pretty dope. Yeah. That, that's like the best of it. Or honestly, all you need is a character that uses a sword that has their own shield. So like you said, Kaya's one. So eventually, I mean, it might take a while, but eventually there should be more characters that, you know, are a sword character and use the shield. So 
just to, just yeah just be patient i feel like it's just one of those things that just be patient eventually somebody who can use it will come yeah i feel like patience is the key we have a lot of shield characters but they're not um literally like a, we have a lot of shield characters but they're not sword characters so eventually a sword character that uses the shield will come out so all, that's all you're waiting for. You're either waiting for a Geo sword character or a, or a sword character that uses a shield. And that's it. <laughs> if the bell can find a home, so can the Shaper. Yep, exactly. All right, guys. I think that's it for me for this stream. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out and sharing some of your opinions. Greatly appreciate it. I know we didn't really get anything done. Um uh sumru theory crafting wise and all that stuff but i mean there is it's it's still too soon to really form any final opinions i think that's something we can all agree on right now while we can have ideas and you know hopes and dreams and you know you know ideals and all that good stuff it's still too soon to really finalize anything and even when sumru does drop we still have to give it more time in order for like the element to flush itself out for Dendro. So that was really the main thing I wanted to get across today. Other than that though, greatly appreciate you guys. All right. Until next time, remember embers to keep burning bright. And I can't wait to talk to all of you guys later. Let's All right, guys. Bye.